get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of Atari, P90X, Einstein Bagels, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25 hosts in-person VIP events and masterminds for top entrepreneurs all over the country, including many events in the e-commerce industry. Rise25 hosted events this past year in Austin, Chicago, Santa Barbara, San Diego, New York, Sonoma, Las Vegas, and probably a city coming to you. If you see the value of immersing yourself with other top entrepreneurs to connect and collaborate to get your business to the next level, go to rise25.com and let us know and find out where our next event is going to be. I am very excited to introduce to you Jan Olofsson. He's co-founder of Icelandic Water Holdings. He spent the last 30 years building successful companies from the ground up and transforming them into industry leaders. He's done it in a variety of fields, including entertainment, media, construction, and many more. John started to build a media and broadcasting portfolio when he founded Skifun, or Skifun. This is Iceland's largest music recording and distribution company with distributing rights for a variety of music and film companies like you've heard of Sony, Universal, Warner Music, Columbia Pictures, Mirabax, and many more. John co-founded the Icelandic Broadcasting Corporation before... That wasn't enough, John, you know, right? Before moving into television in 1990 when he took over Icelandic Television Corporation. In 99, Jon merged all of his companies under one umbrella to form Northern Lights Communications and served as chairman until November 2003 when he sold it, stepped down to co-found Icelandic Water Holdings with his son. And Jan oversees Icelandic Glacier Water, which is born and bottled in Iceland, is the world's first certified carbon neutral natural spring bottled water for both products and operations. What this means is essentially uh, they're an environmental pioneer in the industry because they use 100% natural green energy in the form of geothermal and hydroelectric power to fuel the production. Jan, thanks for joining me. Good to be here. Thank you. I had to, you know, usually it's longer than my usual introduction, but there's so much that you've done. I wanted to kind of pack it in so people realized kind of what was going on behind the scenes before Icelandic. So thank you. you. Um, I want to start off with this. I was you know, doing a lot of research and I read that you said at some at one point um, that you have to be able to do a lot of things to survive. Most people have more than one job and your mother was born in a dirt house. Most, mm-hmm. most people see you now, right? They see Jan, the founder, chairman, owner of Icelandic, um, you know, uh, water holdings, but they don't realize what was before. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, growing up? Well, I was born in a, a small town called Keflavik, which is uh, just by the uh, the uh, international uh, airport in Iceland. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had a, a naval base there, which was was was, was uh, populated with, with uh, U.S. Uh, people, and and somehow you know, they they were at that time allowed to live off base, and we would you know play with their kids, and so you know, we got really really uh, a better deal so to speak living there because we were, we had an eye into the world mm. because in iceland there was you know there was television black and white it was not broadcasting on thursday nights and it took one month's vacation so there was no broadcasting going on in july wow. that was the, the broadcasting industry and 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 the, the radio which, which we had was just a classical uh, really down to earth, kind of BBC kind of a, a station mm-hmm. the beginning, and then later on they opened up a second a channel, which was just open from from noon to five. That was for more more for the younger people, things like that. So it was really really 
awkward and, and way back when I started there. But uh, but we got we got the eye and the ears uh, through through the the, the American radio, uh, unfortunately radio and television. So we got a lot of television and we got a lot of music, which and nobody else on the island would get. So that had a huge huge impact on probably my upbringing. Mm. So a lot of your friends, uh, you had friends who were Americans living that would kind of expose you to what, what they had? Yeah, well, I, I, I remember one day I came home, I think I was six, seven years old, and I was fluently speaking English. Wow. And no one knew why I, why, why, why I picked up English, because the kids I was playing with, they were, they were Americans. Yeah. Um, so your mom and dad... Did you get your entrepreneurial spirit from them, or what did what did they do? Well, I never knew my father, so so he was he was a, a, a he was a captain on a on a coast guard ship, but we never I had no relationship with him ever. Mm. And uh, my mother was uh, she was uh, in, a, in a way an entrepreneur herself. She had got involved in in in, in booking bands and and and. Uh, and was in multi music. I guess somehow I I picked it up from her, what I became because I started you know very young. My my cause I was born. She was young when she had me. I was born at my in my grandparents' bedroom. Hmm. He left and started a new family with with with, a, with her husband, but I stayed behind with my grandparents. Hmm. So what, you live with your grandparents then from yeah. when you're young. Yeah. Or, or, what were they like? like? They were wonderful. I mean, my father, grandfather, he passed away when I was fourteen. Mm. My grandmother, she, she, she was born in the year nineteen hundred, and she lived to be ninety-four years old. Holy cow! Uh, it was a good life, and she was a good woman. And and I think I, whatever I am is thanks to her. Yeah. Nobody else. What was she like? What uh, what was like a day in the life like when you were in their house? Uh, she she would wake up very early in the morning at five o'clock and she would bake flat, flat bread for the for the, the, the neighborhood store hmm. I would wake up to that every morning that sounds the, good the, 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 the smell of the, the freshly baked bread and uh, and well she was really really delicious and um, seeing God they, they have they had a direct uh, connection so there was there was there was a lot of that in my household what did you want to be when you grew up when you were young, a doctor. A doctor. Why? Because I thought I could just be a good doctor. I don't know. <laughs> the, but, but we didn't have. I didn't have the finance and, and the means to be able to go from my hometown into the city and, and go to college and university. So I I started working and at, when my father grandfather died mm. at fourteen. At sixteen, I was making more money than most people in, in my neighborhood. So. It just uh, one thing led to another. So, do you at that point continue to go to school, or do you just continue to work? I dropped out of school when I was sixteen. Hmm. I, 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 well, you would say I finished high school, and, and, and that was it. And then I was just making too much money to 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 do anything else. Yeah. But I did. I, but I did go back to school, school when I was four years old. I then went to went to Harvard. Well, when yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you do that? Why even bother at that point? Because well, I just wanted to do something which I, which I, I wanted to do when I was young, and I, mm. I did it for me. Yeah, yeah, good for you. And, I, and it was pretty brilliant. I, I learned so much, and it was it was just a really, really the best thing I ever did. So it, it was worth it. Yeah. So, because when I was reading about it, you made the plunge into the music industry at fourteen, and yeah. um, what was happening at that time? It seemed like that would have been a tough year for you with your your grandfather. Yeah, but what what happened was, you know, in Iceland they would always have these Saturday night dances, you know, in in every 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 you know town or village in 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 the country, and they would be for sixteen years and older. And me being fourteen, you're out I of luck. That was I thought it was very unfair that we didn't have something. So I so I kind of put together a a, a, a plan. So I decided to talk to the guys. Tell him that I had the best band that I could have the full ad in the local paper, and and he said, "Well, okay, you got that. I'll give it a try." Now I go to the paper, and I tell him, "Look, I got the whole. I got the best band. 
you got to give me the paper, you know, like the, the ad that I'll pay you on Tuesday. And they said, hey, we'll give you, we'll, we'll do that. And now I can call the band. <laughs> and the band, I got the venue and the ad. <laughs> Will you play? And they said, sure. So the band comes. And uh, actually, it was, it was sold out. So that was, it was really good. How much were tickets it, at that time? I, I don't remember. It, was, it wasn't that much. But so the band comes. And I go to greet them, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm a small guy, you know. And they say, could you please go and get Jon Olofsson? And we, I would, we would like to uh, uh, talk to him. I said, yeah, I am Jon Olofsson. And, uh, and they kind of ignored that. Come on, go get him. You know? And I said, guys, sorry, I am Jon Olofsson. They looked at each other and were like, whoa, what's going on here? We've been had. I said, guys, don't worry. It's sold out. You're going to get paid. <laughs> and that That's was it. great. Wow. <laughs> Pretty innovative. Um, what was next then? Because you later um, started your own record store, right? Yeah, well, uh, from this on, I became like a, a, a band manager. Well, at a time, I was, at, at one time, I was, all, I was also a roadie uh, working for bands. So I was just trying to be in the music industry. And, and one of the, the biggest bands in Iceland was called Judas. And uh, I applied to become their, you know, their, their top roadie. And they turned me down. But two years later, I was their manager. Really? Why? They just yeah. saw you were doing a lot in the, in the business? I, I then, because they didn't let me have the job, I went just, I became a manager for all the bands. And then, and this, I was doing a great job. And then in two years, I was their manager. So that's... Uh, so were you then traveling all over Iceland? What was that like, managing the band? Oh, yeah. We were doing tours, you know, we were doing, oh, oh every week we'd be out, 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 out and about. And then we decided to go into a recording. We recorded the album hmm. and uh, and we got involved in the recording studios, which we were part owners of. And, and, uh, and, uh, and then after the Christmas season, when we sold our first album, one of the stores couldn't pay me. Hmm. And he told me that he was going out of business. So I said to him, look, let me come and look at it. I looked at this book, I said, tell you what, if you give me the keys to the store, I'll take care of all, all your debts. Mm. And so he did, he gave me the keys to the store, I went and negotiated with everybody who he owed money to, and, and that's how I started my first record store. Oh. And, so, and from and there on, I started another record store the same year in, in, in the main city. This was like in, in the surf, in, on the main, main high street. And that's where my, my kind of music industry started. You know, we started recording a lot of stuff and we became the biggest uh, record label in Iceland. When I sold everything in 2003, we owned 85% of every recording, every recording in Iceland. So mm. because I was collecting masters everywhere. Whenever I could buy the masters, I would buy them. So I don't think there's never been any, any as big art collector in one field as I was in, in, in when I was doing this. For sure. So, I mean, you're young at the time. So how oh, are yeah. you managing, you're traveling all over, you have multiple record stores. That's a lot to manage. Yeah, and, and, and I can tell you, I remember one, at one weekend, I was involved in 21 gigs around the country. Wow. Whether I booked, it was my own gig, because I was uh, throwing, or I was managing, booking the bands. So, so, so I, I was... I was pretty active when I was on the scene. Was was when I was younger. Would you say, Jan, that your what was your superpower at the time? Are you really good at helping, like organizing and putting those people in place? Because you can't be in twenty one or twenty seven or a hundred different places at once. What well, did you do to manage everything? It's just and this is before uh, phones. Right. Ex exactly. <laughs> You, you 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 want to call yet? Take over the landslide. I think you know later in that in the you know, in later in the period the, the the big phones came for cars, right? But mobile phones were not not then there. No, no, it was just about about you know being uh, you know organized and 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 understand the logistics and and just making things happen. That's and a lot never, of logistics. Never 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 let let anybody down and 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 make sure you're always on on top of it. And you, but then you also then that wasn't enough for you. So you went into television, also. Well, from from radio, from 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 music, I yeah. 
I was from Catholic, and, and we had the, the, the pleasure of ha having the unfortunate radio and television service there. So we had a, alternative music to listen to, which the other kids in, in the country didn't have. So we started in a, in a, uh, really fighting for changing the law. And I was, I was instrumental in, 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 in having the law on, on broadcasting change. So it was not a monopoly anymore for the, for, 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 for the government to run the station. So after we, we uh, uh, achieved that, I started the first radio station. Mm. And, and, and I kind of wanted to, and I kind of public with it. And it was a huge, huge success. And uh, that's in 1986. And then at the same time, other guys went and started a, a paid TV operation, which actually failed miserably with them, and I took that over in, in, with other people in in, in uh, 1990. So it was, you know. Why do you think it failed for them? Well, I don't know. I think they, first of all, they were under under finest. They were never finest. And uh, and uh, and uh, uh, the only, only reason they got so far was because one of the banks actually in Iceland went completely behind them, and they had over 60 percent of their own equity behind the TV station, and that was really a bad situation for the bank, so yeah. we, we bailed them out. Yeah. I mean, because obviously they did, it didn't work what they were doing, so what did you do differently? Well, first of all, I, 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 they needed a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of structure, a lot of, lot of uh, discipline, which was not there. Hmm. And I, I hired Actually, the headmaster from the commercial school in uh, kind, of, uh, kind of college in Iceland. He had taken a year off, and who's better to get put structure in place and discipline in place than the headmaster? <laughs> so, I, so I hired him, and he came in with me, and 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 I took care of all the all the financial uh, pre engineering of the company, and I, and I, and I go to it all because there was a lot of money, and I go to all that and got it all done. And he got, you know, the, the operation to to start work as as, as properly as, as possible. Hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and then and and then I stepped in later and became the CEO of chairman for a while, and then and then uh, until I sold. How did you convince him to stop what he was doing and and do something completely different? Well, there's a story behind this because the reason I was asked to help was that. At this time, the three banks in Iceland were about to merge. There was mm -hmm. a bank that was dedicated to the to the fishing industry. There was a bank dedicated to the to the to the uh, general industry, and there was the commercial bank. There was a commercial bank that has this problem with with, with, with their 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 situation with this TV station. And if 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 we could not save them or and save the company. That mercy would never happen. Mm. So I was when when we actually finalized to take that over and do the deal. This this headmaster was actually the vice chairman of the commercial bank, so he was in those meetings. He had an invested interest in making sure this was successful. Well, he had actually taken a, a leave from the school for one year. Already done that, mm -hmm. so he was going to go to to Brazil and study European law and just understand the European thing. And, and I convinced him not to do that and then come and do this to make this uh, into the success that uh, should be. And, and, and he, he did that. Yeah. And I, I was very pleased. What made you decide to merge all of the companies into Northern Lights? Well, that, that was, that was uh, an idea from the banks that we were working with. But, you know, it, it makes sense. And, and, and if you think about it, no other company could do this. This is before we had competition law. So I grandfathered all these these companies. I could merge them together. As soon as I sold it, they had to break them up. Because they were too 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 I mean when you have you own the broadcasting, you own the the, 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 the mobile company, you own the, the, the a newspaper, you own all the content from films to music and radio station, you have everything is under one umbrella. No other company in the world has ever had that. And, and because we, I grandfathered it, so that's why yeah. they couldn't break me up. But as soon as I sold, uh, they, they broke it up. 
So, Yom, what was the toughest part about running all these companies at once for you? It's all about having good people. Yeah. Because so, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, we're, we're in the people's business. And if you have great, great people who actually you can trust and they, 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 they admire you and would like to work with you, then you have a winning formula. And it's all about that, getting the right people involved. Yeah. What did you do to help instill? Because I was actually watching a talk online with you kind of addressing a team, I think, at um, Icelandic Glacial and kind of giving them the vision. And you were talking about the design of the packaging and yeah. why the design was the way it was. So it seems like you always, what were you doing then to inspire the team like that other companies, you know, heads should be doing also? Well, I mean, it, it, it's all, always about when you have a product, especially it's probably like ours, it's always about the story. What is the story? What, what, what are the pillars behind the, the, the product we're trying to create here? Mm -hmm. And and when we look at this, I mean, Iceland is really cool. Everybody loves Iceland. It doesn't get pure. It doesn't get clean. It doesn't get anything like that because it's the youngest, youngest land on, on this planet. And, you know, it's just now discovered by everybody. So it, that goes very well. We don't have any issues in, 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 with other countries or politics or religions. We're not involved in any of those those, those uh, 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 countries that we see around the world. And uh, and the water is the best water there is. It, it's very natural, high pH, comes from the spring, and, it, and, it, and it's gone through very young rocks, which is just lava, because our, 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 our rocks are younger than, about four and a half times younger than, than, than the Alps. And that's why our water is much softer and the minerals are much lower. Take Avio, for example, this TTS is 361 when we are 62. We are really, really clean and crisp water yeah. with a high pH. So the story is there. And also, we're from a country where 80% of all energy is renewable energy. So we're really basing everything on a green operation. Right. And, and and we've been we've been a, 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 a green company from day one. We were certified a couple of years later as, as the first company being being uh, carbon neutral, as you just said in your introduction. So we always try to make sure that we are doing whatever is best for the environment, and we want to make sure that we are bringing the best water there is to the world. And with that goes responsibility, which is when you have all that water. Because I'm going to tell you that you know the, the amount of water that flows in our from our spring in our our neighborhood is tw to ocean is twice the world consumption of water in bottles. Mm. So when you have all that water, you have responsibility to help people when people are in need, and that's yeah. what we've done very often, and we're very proud of doing that. We we helped a lot. When Haiti had an issue with with the earthquake. We gave over a million dollars worth of water there. We were the ones that Sierra came to when everybody else said no in the United States to help her give pe water to the people of Flint. And uh, of course, after we did it, everybody else did it. Yeah. And, 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 and the same thing with Shear and Ben Stiller, we, we've, been, we've been supplying water to, to Puerto Rico. And those are the things that we are really proud of. We want to be seen as we are, that we are here to do a good thing, bring healthy, good water to, 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 to the world, and also help yeah. where we can. Yeah. I'm going to get back to your journey in a second, but talk about, I want you to talk about the design, one, because it's a unique design, and I'm curious if you got any pushback when you're trying to produce, if anyone's seen the bottle, it looks, well, all of you describe it, what it looks like. I don't know well, if you I have can, one handy there. I can get one. Yeah, get one, yeah. Grab one. Yeah, anyone listening to the audio right now, Yona is going to go grab uh, a bottle of the uh, Icelandic Glacial so we can see what the packaging looks like. So if you're listening to it and you want to check it out, go to the video piece um, on Inspired Insider. So yeah, let's take a look. So when we decided to do this, we wanted to make sure that we had a bottle which was really true to Iceland. Yeah. Well, I thought it was very natural it would be square. But then you don't have any space, which is packaging. Yeah, packaging wise, you know, there's no air in the, in the box. It's all full with 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 with, with the product, and and we wanted to have it, you know, show where it's from. So we wanted to have kind of iceberg effect 
on the bottom on the top, as you can see here. Yeah. And uh, and I went to the designers who actually is a very very good company in, in England called Design Bridge, and I asked them to do this, and they came back to me after about a month and said, you know, you know, it's not possible because you have to understand if you if you put you know, another case on top of this and another case on that, you know, maybe a ton of water is going to be lying on this, you know. But when you start shipping it, this, right. this is going to not going to be sustainable. It's going to break. And I said, "Have you have you worked with any you know, you know, a structural engineer on, on on this opportunity?" And they said, "No. Please go talk to at least two or three. Hmm. I'm sure you can find it out." And it took them three months to get it up, but yeah. they got it. You weren't giving up on it. No, no, I mean just you. But also, we had to do something different from everybody else. Just another bottle. It's not enough. Yeah. Has right. to be something unique, and we wanted to make sure that you know that that that, that the bottle actually gives the right image of Iceland. So we we're using the the, the, the gray, which you know can, can represent you know the snow, and the blue, which is the water, and and the black, which is the which is the uh, lava, and then we mm. have you know small eight point four here on 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 the bottle, and you see that up here. Yeah, that's the so pH. Oh wow! The eight point four. That's in red, which is the volcanoes. So we're yeah. trying to use, use those things. That's pretty cool. Um, was it once you had the design? Was the production of the bottle difficult since it's not, you know, it's, it's jagged and it's not smooth? Or was that fine oh, no. once you had? No, that's all, all fine. So so what? So we we were able to patent this, this bottle. So no one no one can actually go out and to try to do make make a, a similar bottle. Mm. That's that's very important that you are, we have a unique look. And no one can actually. Try to be like us. Yeah. Have you gotten any letters or um, people saying uh, the health benefits? Because if anyone knows, you know, acidic. If you eat something that's acidic and your environment's acidic, it's more of a an environment for disease and inflammation. Whereas if you have an alkaline environment, it's more of an environment for health and not met not all of the you know i got into this rabbit hole because of you of watching all these videos of all, people testing these different waters and the yeah. ph's a lot of them are um acidic they're they're less than you know seven and so having alkaline water is actually beneficial for health i would think do you get any um people writing in about them having yeah. health benefits from it absolutely I, I, we, we have that we have people all over the world that have that, that come up with all kinds of stories. There's a woman that we heard about in Singapore. She had a, a brain tumor and, and started drinking the water. And the brain tumor stopped growing and it eventually mm. started you know, going down. Is it because of the water? I, I can't say that, but at least she started drinking the water at the same time. So right. she calls right. this water the miracle water. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, and the other day I was in, I was in South of France. There was, there was a couple there driving a convertible and, 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 and they had a one liter bottle of Icelandic uh, in, in their cup holders mm. in the car. And I, said, and, I, and I stopped and I said, hey guys, sorry not to bother you, but I'm very happy to see you in this world. And one asked me, where, do you, where did you buy it? And he said, well, I'm, I'm, from, I'm Russian, I'm from Moscow. This water is available there. And I can tell you, I have, I've had a, an allergy problem since I was a kid. But when I started drinking your water, mm. it the way, and I, since I started drinking your water, I have never had that again. So wherever I go, I always have Amazon sip a case wherever I go. Yeah. So so people have their, their stories like this. Uh, yeah. I think you what you just said. It's very important that we consume alkaline products, water, and food. Yeah. Eighty percent, twenty percent should be acidic. That that's the right formula, but it tends to be the other way around. When we drink alcohol, coffee, or tea, more, yeah, um, exactly. We, and that the body needs to take that liquid and bring it up to seven, to where the blood is, and that's the one single most difficult thing for the body to do. Yeah, that's the the the, the, the one thing that makes the body grow older faster than if anything else. So having 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 high natural pH water is very good for you. It keeps yeah. your skin young. It keeps keeps the body really really you know functioning in a good yeah. way. Yeah, I can't remember, you know, which I was watching a TED talk and it was like a cancer researcher and he made some statement of, which really hit me, which cancer thrives in an acidic environment. And That's right it. then and there, and, you know, 
I made it a point to make sure that, you know, like fruits, vegetables, anything that's alkaline to shift towards that whenever possible. So it's, I, I didn't realize that you had the pH on the bottle. 8.4. Yeah, we too. Yeah, we too. That's and cool. it's not big on the bottle because we, we don't want to be, we just want to be what we are. Subtle. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of doctors are now recommending our, our, our water and only our water. So, so I think that's more and more happening. That's really, that's, I love that. Um, what you mentioned Flint. Um, I want you to talk a little about what happened in Flint that, that gave uh, Icelandic more, much more exposure. Well, what happened was uh, 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 one of my partners is, 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 uh, has, is, has somebody who is uh, connected with Shear. And, uh, and Shear wanted to really work on the problem that the people of Flint was facing. And she had called a few of the, if not all of the water companies in the United States and asked if they would help her to do something to help, 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 help the people of Flint. And she got rejected by everyone. Because oh. Flint then, did it had something wrong with the water supply, or yeah, the the the, the, the water was terminated and, and the people were getting sick, and it was just, it was just really a disaster. I mean, mm-hmm. this is something should not be happening in a in a, in a, in a town or or any place in the United States. Uh, but anyway, uh, so she she got in touch with me, and we said, "Sure, hey, well, whatever you want to do, we'll double it." And we 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 went with her completely behind and did the whole thing, and it was beautiful because. She was so great. She told everybody this story, like I told you now, how everybody else turned him down. This guy in Iceland has no reason to do anything. He says yes immediately, and no, and she's still working with us, and, and she loves doing that. And we really respect her, and and are really proud to be be be, be her partner in doing this. Yeah. Um, and then the other piece I wanted to, to ask about is: so in two thousand three, why did you decide to sell? Uh, Think it out well, of it. Well, you know, when when you when you been thriving, coming from no nowhere, because we had there was no money in my family when I was born. Coming from where I was to where I where I, where I got to, you you became a, a big fish in a small pond. And I was already living in England from from ninety eight. My kids were going to school in England, so we were living there, and I was I was ready to move on, and I wanted to big you know, a big good playground. Uh, but we did not plan to go and do water. Yeah. I sold the company. I sold everything I owned in Iceland in one go. Only because I got an offer which, uh, you know. Offer you couldn't didn't, refuse. Well, he, yeah, he didn't even negotiate with me. He just said, sure. I'll, 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 he, he just said yes to the price I, I, I asked for. And uh, we went to, uh, I sold the company and I was in England like for three years. The three, three months going like nuts. Wake when you having nothing to do. I had, I had, it's the had opposite never, of what you used to before, right? I mean, I, excuse me, I had to de- resign from twenty one boards when I sold my companies, so you know I was pretty busy at the time. And you know, my son Christian was 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 actually brokering an airplane to the to, to the second airline, low low airline in Iceland. And the air, 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 airline uh, airplane was owned by a Saudi, and he said to him if you, he could find a water source. And he went out and found the source, found a little white label company in bankruptcy and, and, and talked to the liquidator, put in a bid, won the bid, and called the Saudis, hey, you got a water company. But the Saudi never paid. Mm. This is also in November. It's all about the same time. So three months later, that's when I called my son and said, look, Christian, what's, the, what's happening with the water company? And uh, it was still there. So I said, He's like, we have a lot of water to drink. Um, I'm going to come to Iceland tomorrow, let's sit down and see what we could do with this. And this is how it all started. Wow. But, it, but, but the thing is, maybe what, what sometimes I, I, I go back to, because I had always been competing in Iceland with the government, in radio, in television, in mobile uh, uh, operation. I was, my competitor was always the government. So when I was doing my analysis and doing all my work to, to release Icelandic, I completely forgot to think about who are my competitors. Coke, Pepsi, Nestle, Danone, uh, Fiji, you, you, you name it. Yeah. 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 I just completely forgot to think about that. And if I've done that, probably I've never started. But, hey, here I am. I read um, an article, and if it's true, that you had thought originally you could do it for 8 to $12 million, but it turned out to be a lot more than that. Oh, Why yeah. was that I the case? 
because building a brand worldwide is not something you do overnight. And uh, and uh, if I know then now then what I know now, I have probably not have done this. But yeah, we're about 130 million dollars later into this product, and uh, and 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 uh, uh, I'm I'm on my fourth 14th year. I thought I was going to do it for five years. What's so the hardest part, Yon, you know, about the water business that outsiders don't realize? You're breaking up for you. Oh, so what's what's the hardest part about the water business that that outsiders don't realize is so difficult? I I, well, I think really is you have a lot of guys going out there selling a case of water for three ninety nine, which is just purified you know, tap water. And, and people consume that, yeah. and and we are we are, uh, our case is what twenty thirty dollars. So it's it's, it's, a, it's a huge difference when you're trying to work in the premium sector. That that's another world than 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 uh, when you go to the mass market. But the thing is, a lot of people think water is water because it's in a bottle. Well, that's not right. Yeah. There's a lot of water bottles is not good good for you. Right. But if, if people care, and especially if they care for their children, they should only be given in really, really good water. I recommend Iceland, Icelandic, but you know, <laughs> you can buy it here, but you know, I can send buy it. <laughs> well, talk about the distribution, though, because you deliver all over the world, right? Yeah. So, was that challenging, the distribution yeah. piece? Yeah, well, that's just logistics. So that's that's not so challenging. It's, no. it's to get to get the, a market interested and get it up and running and, and give, turn it into a success. That is, of course, challenging. And we've been very fortunate that we have a lot of markets which we are really just doing amazingly well. You know, I tell you about Australia, which is the market which is furthest away from us. We have now about eighty percent distribution, wow. and we're we're selling. It's become our now third third biggest market in, in one year. We can talk about another small a small market which is Bermuda, where about sixty three thousand people live. We sold over forty thousand cases there last year. Wow. There's almost one case for every inhabitant on the island. And this is this I don't think anybody else has done that. How but did you decide to even go into Bermuda? Did someone just happen you know what what was that decision? Well, there's a, there's an old story, but about behind everything, and that story is that the the, the owners of the company, uh, their daughter was 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 in school here in New York and Parsons, and my daughter was there too, and they they actually they shared a flat, and 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 then uh, after graduation four years later, the parents meet, and I realized oh they're in that business and I'm in this business, they were actually carrying wash water, and they kicked it out and took us in, and and uh, they're selling us multiple more, times more than they sold the other guy. So we see the brand climbing and becoming the brand. So we can actually look to the day that this brand will be one of the biggest brands in, in, in the world. Yeah. How does it do in the U.S.? You mentioned a lot of competitors, obviously. If you would have known all the com- or even thought about the competitors, you'd be like, forget this, I don't want to do this. But how is no, we- it in the U.S.? We're doing very well. We, we, we're one of the leading, leading, leading brands in the natural sector, so, and, and we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of change in our distribution coming this year. So, we should have a very successful year here now. Yeah, but you know, uh, when when Fiji back in the day became successful, their sales were ninety five percent in the United States and five percent internationally. We're about sixty forty. Wow, sixty United States, forty in internationally. So, so we've been. Building this as a global brand from day one, not just focusing on one market and then then uh, branching out, but we did did it in a simultaneously. So we're, we're in a lot of good markets, doing very well. There. So um, I read that Anheuser Busch took um, an interest in you in 2007. How did you end up getting the attention of Anheuser Busch? Well. <laughs> I, we asked for the meeting. Uh, a, a, a friend of ours was was working with me and my son, Jim Topkin. He he actually arranged for the meeting to be take place, and we were to, we were told this was the only time that they took a meeting for somebody who asked for a meeting, because they always choose who they would talk to and look for the friends they were looking for, and just they picked them up. And when we came in there, they told us that they were they were talking to three other brands. 
they want to go to go into the to, to the world business and uh, obviously we were there at the right time have we been there six months earlier they were not ready have we been there six months later we will miss that boat and you know and I, and they, they decided there and then in the meeting they said we do a test with us with, with, with in California and uh, and a year later they, they signed a deal and we they became our partners and, and our distributors but when they signed the deal, that's when they told me, when you guys walked out, we canceled all everybody else. We wow. decided to, they, we didn't know that. <laughs> They're not going to tell you that. <laughs> why Why is that? What did you talk about in that meeting that they were so sure that this is the one they wanted to go with? What well, first, of all, first of all, all the stories. I mean, the water is the purest water there is. The quantity of water is endless. Uh, our bottle looks like nothing else. We're the first carbon neutral serve a company at that time. Right. I mean, all the things that we, were, we had put together, the story about the brand, the passion about the brand, the design, everything we had was done right. And, yeah. and, and I think that's that's what has really kept us going is we never cut corners. We always just done what's best for the brand, what's best for the company. Never thought about yeah. anything else. That's pretty amazing. How did that affect the company once they came on board? Uh, it, 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 it was good because they, they, they bought in a lot of money and we built this big factory and everything was good for us and we've now been with them. I think we're now in year 11. With, you, know, with you know, when I think about this, it's, it's really remarkable what you and your, your son have done with this from what probably at the time seemed like an oh crap type of situation <laughs> that he has this company and, and then the investor backs out. Um, but it's always for you, it seems to be about the people, right? I mean, that's how you're able to do everything. So I'm curious early on, when it was just you and your son, you had this company, what was the hiring like? What people did you have to put in place to then actually create the infrastructure to build this? Well, we, we well, because I've been building companies all my life, so that was yeah. not, not, not a big test to do that. The thing is, was, was well, I've, I've never, build companies which are going to be operating in more than one country outside of Iceland. So that was the challenging part. Right. And, and and maybe the, one of the fundamental mistakes we did we in Christian in the beginning was that we did not hire any industry expert to work with us. We found out the hard way everything we've done. Mm. But at the same time, we are unique because we haven't been doing what everybody else right. has been doing. Right. And, Innovation and, comes from outside industry, so you didn't know any better in, in like yeah. the bottle, for instance. We did everything ourselves. Yeah, everything ourselves. And you know, hey, we're here, and uh, we are now really seen as one of the leading brands, and we are we're seeing a lot of a lot of positive uh, feedback for the brand, and and uh, yeah, people love it, and we're happy. What was what were some of the key hires for you that you put in the people you put in place? Well, there, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are, by management, of course, is, is really important. And, but in this industry, everybody is important, from from the driver to the woman who serves the food, and everybody has really a key role here. But quality is really what is most important. That everybody who works with the company knows they have to represent health and quality. Whenever you see something. Connected with Iceland and Glacier, you know it's good for you. It's, it's going to be something you can trust. Yeah. And but well, the big big hires, of course, was was when we hired Reza Mesa, who was who was now our CEO in the States. He came he came from a company called Activate. Before there, he was with Nestle, running running part of their water portfolio. He's a great guy. He's done a great job with us, and we love him. And it's been really good to work with him. And a lot of the, the team which is coming on board now are, are really senior people that we can now afford to have on board and actually they see us as, 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 as a winning brand and they want to be part of it. Yeah. Those yeah. are the things that are important and of course my my guy in Iceland who who is my 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 offer, you know, manager in Iceland and CFO, he was my CFO also with my with me and my media company. So we've been, been together for a long, long time and, and, and I, when you have people that you can really trust and they believe in you and they, they stand behind you, it just moves mountains. Yeah. You know, I want to thank you for this and uh, just really impactful advice. And I have two questions left, but I first want to point people towards they should check out IcelandicGlacial.com and check out what they have going on. And where else can they find it? I mean, I'm assuming 
different grocery stores? They can order it online. Where else can they find? We're with Amazon and also you can just go onto our website and there's, there's, a, there's a store located to put in your zip code and you can see all the stores that yeah. you have in your neighborhood. And there's a wide variety. I mean, you guys have a variety of glass bottles, um, the, the other type of bottles too, and you know, a yep. wide variety of uh, different... Yep. We came out as, as, a, as, as a, a still water uh, company. We now have a, a, a sparkling both in pet and, and, and glass. We have glass now which is very important, and, and, and within a few weeks, we'll be introducing uh, flavors, sparkling flavors. Oh, which wow. is oh, that's exciting. Yeah. So we expect to be coming out with new, 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 new skews. Can you say what, what the flavors are yet, or is it still to be yeah. released? No, no, I can tell you that's going to be uh, uh, lime, lemon, and antiflower. And what's the last one? Antiflower. Oh, why that one? That's because it's really healthy and good for you. <laughs> of course. Um, so I always ask two last questions, you know, um, because it's Inspired Insider. And one is, what's been the low moment in the business? And the flip side is, what's been one of the proudest moments uh, for you in the business? Uh, I mean, this has been a really, we talk about the I mean, this, is, this has been really a, a, a long road, and there were times where things did not look Can you see me? Yeah, now you're coming in, yep. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we're talking about Icelandic. There are times when, when things were not really going well, and, and I remember that there was that one week that we had actually come to an end, and I had made the decision I was going to go to the liquidator and, 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 uh, and make uh, uh, take the company to bankruptcy. And I was going to do it on Friday. But somebody invited me for lunch and I think I had too many beers. So I, I, didn't, I didn't make it to, to the liquidator. And uh, over the week and I, I raised another $2 million. So it all got, all got good, but I was there. I was, I was ready to go and it was, it was the end of the road. But hey, there's a God. <laughs> you kept pushing. <laughs> yeah. What about one of the proudest moments? Well, it, it, it's, it's always, you know, amazing when you do something which, which hasn't been done before. I mean, when we did the deal with Arnold Zippus, no one in Iceland has ever done a deal like this prior to us doing it. And, and uh, that was a real honor to, to work with these people. But there's so many other things we've done since then. So, I mean, it doesn't matter how big the people are or, or, or the companies are, it's just about, it's about the people you meet and how big they are to you. And I only met giants in my life lately. So it's just wonderful, beautiful people who are really capable and, and, and are doing an amazing job. And, and that's, that really strikes me. What about um, working with your son? How did that work? Uh, what was that like? Well, it's been beautiful and, it, and it's very good. And we have, you know, we look, it seems our tempers go well together. We, we, we don't have arguments or, or, or disagreements. We're not always in, in agreement on, on everything that we are doing, but we always, you know, there's never been an issue. But it, it, it is a blessing when you can actually work with your with, with, with your, your, your kids and, and, when, and when it works. Yeah. It can also sure. be like all the way around. Yeah. You know, I want to be the first one to thank you so much for doing this. Everyone should check out IcelandicGlacial.com. Get the water. It's alkaline. It's healthy. Plus... You know, the way they make it is good for the environment, too. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Can I give you one more hint? As many as you'd like. Tell you guys to look at Secret Solstice, one of the nicest music festivals in the world. We have that in Iceland. What is it called? Secret Solstice. Okay. It is a music festival, has great bands, in a 24-hour 20, uh, daylight. It's is amazing adventure. So when, is the, when is the best time to go to Iceland? The, this is the festival is, is in, 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 in mid June, about twenty second of June. Okay. At the solstice, so it's it's beautiful. That is something to, not to miss. How often do you go back to Iceland? Yeah, I, I'm there more or less every month, something. Like that. But I'm, I'm altogether, I spend maybe three to four months out of the year. Nice. Okay, well then go to Iceland in June, everyone. Hey, we'll see you there. You heard it from Jan. <laughs> You see you there. You're welcome. Be my guest. What I got, you can't buy. It resides 
between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a beach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand